So let's make things interesting. Let's introduce some trigonometry into the equation. So here's Robin, and you can tell by her determined face that she really wants to push this cart through this brick wall. And it seems like she's not having very much luck. In this example, something's different from last time. Robin isn't pushing exactly to the right or exactly to the left. She's pushing at some angle, and let's call that angle here alpha. I'm sure you can already see the triangles forming in your head. Let's take a look at what's going on. Over here, I'm going to draw a diagram for the cart, a force diagram. Of course, as always, we have the cart's weight pointing downwards, and notice I didn't even tell you what m was. We don't even care. We have some normal force pointing upwards. We know because the car isn't falling to the ground. We have Robin, who's pushing, well, it looks like she's pushing down and to the right. So I'm actually going to put that force over here. Let's label it fr for Robin. And we can't forget that the wall is pushing to the left. Of course, if the wall weren't there, the cart would be free to roll. But since it is, and it's stopping the motion, the wall itself must be providing a force. Let's call that fw for wall. Now when I look at this force diagram, something jumps out to me. I've got these forces, which are both vertical, the wall force, which is exactly to the left, and then the force of Robin pushing, which is causing me some pain. It's not to the right. It's not straight down. It's some combination of right and down. Wait a second, though. I know how to handle this. This is just me breaking down a vector into its components. Let's make a right triangle, where this will be the hypotenuse. Well, here's our right triangle, and now we see we get our angle alpha back again. And let's label these sides. Well, this is the horizontal component of Robin's pushing, and this is the vertical component. So I'm going to label them FRX and FRY. One thing that's important to remember is that by writing FR as these two together, we can now get rid of FR. This is the exact same trick we did last unit when we had some initial velocity and it was at some angle alpha. We broke that velocity into X and Y components. Here we're doing the exact same thing, but with forces. And just like with velocity, once we had expressed it in terms of components, X and Y, we didn't care about this guy anymore. Likewise, we're now using the X and Y components of Robin's pushing, and we're not going to think about this too much anymore. But we still have to answer the question, what are these values for the X and Y components of Robin's pushing? Let me give you some numbers so that this is less abstract. Let's say that the force Robin's pushing with is 100 newtons total, that's FR, and this angle she's pushing at is 30 degrees. Can you use your knowledge of trig to tell me what is FRX and what is FRY? Enter your answers here and here to one decimal place. And I'll be very impressed if you can get this right on your first try. 